Hey everybody, I'm Jason Mefford and I am with Brad Miller and we are walking a spiritual path today. Now today we want to talk about something that um, again is kind of interesting. It was a topic that kind of popped in for us to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're both going to figure out where this podcast is going just like you are <laughs> as well because we don't know exactly what we're going to say yet, right? But it's interesting about um, reflecti reflectivity, reflectivity, right? Not reflexology, but reflectivity. Something different, yeah. Something different, and it's interesting because it's it's a uh, it's actually um, brings up a simple uh, principle or thought that I that I usually talk with people that I'm coaching, executives that I'm coaching. Um, as well. And so it's interesting. So Brad, maybe if you want to kind of share the the story or the 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 inspiration behind, you know, this term and of of what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about, yeah. Um, so I was listening, I don't know if it was, if it was a podcast or or what it was that I was listening to. And someone um it was sort of a coaching y sort of a feel to it, but um they they talk about this thing that they called the law of reflectivity. Um, and they explained it that um, that how you are towards yourself, so how you look at yourself, how you think about yourself, is how others will be towards you. So how others are going to think about you or they're going to feel about you or whatnot. Um, and after this person said that, I was like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, if you don't have a lot of self-love, so if you kind of hate yourself, if you have like hate towards who you are or something about you, you know, have low self-esteem or whatever like that, odds are good that other people around you are going to kind of act that same way towards you. You know, they're going to um, kind of put you down or going to hate on you. Um, you know, and, and you could say that maybe that the energy that you're putting out is that they're kind of picking up on it and it's coming back to you kind of reflective that way. Um, but, but yeah, but I kind of uh, heard that and was like, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing from both a, a 3D coaching standpoint, but I think there also can be some spiritual um, aspects of this as well that might be interesting to kind of explore here uh, on the podcast today. So, Yeah, because that's what I, I, um, I, I use the, the metaphor of the mirror often when I'm coaching people. Uh, or your hand too, right? It's like every time you want to place blame somewhere and you point, want to point your finger at somebody, you're pointing three back at yourself, right? Is that it's usually never the other person's fault. It's something you did. And this is one thing, you know, again, from a 3D coaching for leaders that a lot of times we don't realize, but there is this tie into spirituality that we're going to get to, right? But but almost every time I'm coaching somebody, especially if they're having issues with maybe a peer in their organization or a, a team member, right? Is it's like, okay, well, they're they're treating you this way or they're doing this for you, right? Well, hold up the mirror mm -hmm. because you're doing something that is usually causing them to respond in a certain way. And so just like this podcast or post or whatever it was is saying, you know, we, whatever we tend to put out there is what we tend to get back. Right. And again, this goes, how does it tie into spirituality? Well, cause and effect, the universal law of cause and effect, right? You cause, you do something, you create something, there is an effect on that. And since everything is energy, then everything we do, how we do it energetically and the intention behind it is usually what we get back. And you could think of it from a karmic perspective, if you want to use that word. But it's also from a vibration and frequency resonance as well. And so another interesting, uh, you know, kind of point to pull in is, is David Hawkins um, did uh, several different books. But one of the things that he's known for is the scale of consciousness where he went back, he used muscle testing and other stuff to try to figure out that different states of consciousness, like anger and courage and love and unconditional love all kind of vibrated at a different frequency and resonance, which it does, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's part of the way that things work. 
and obviously the 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 further up you go up the scale the higher the level of consciousness the higher the frequency level that goes along with it and even though he did a scale and called it scale of consciousness as i looked at it there's a lot of the even vibration and frequency that kind of lines up with this scale that he created even though i don't think he really thought of it that way but there is something to that too and so, you know, again, what's interesting and in, in how he kind of taught that too is similar to what you heard, right? The energy you're putting out actually creates in matter form the things around you. Mm -hmm. Same thing, law of manifestation that everybody loves to talk about. It's the same thing, right? The, the energy, things will materialize in form, right? Right in resonance with whatever you're putting out so if you're angry you're going to get anger back from people if you're loving you're going to get love back from people if you're courageous you're going to see people that are courageous right and even even to the point where you know again you can you can try this experiment at home it's okay to try this experiment at home but if you you know, focus in on, on how you're feeling. And if you happen to be grumpy and you're feeling grumpy, well, everything you look at, you're going to view from the grumpy lenses. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to find things to be grumpy about or to say, oh, the world is so bad. If the next day, if you put on the, the happy, love, positive glasses, everything you're going to see is going to be happy, love, and positive. And it's because of the glasses you're putting on in the metaphor, but it's really the energy that you're putting out and what things will, will then resonate and be drawn back to you because of the frequency that you're putting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can look at the other way as well, then is that if you see that the things around you are very negative and you know, whatever, it's likely that it's because you are, negative and are kind of down and having those those negative vibrations as well you know the idea that you create your environment the world mm -hmm. around you is the way it is because you've made it that way you know um you know we talk about cause and effect you are the cause the effect is the world around you what you see out there how the world is towards you um you know if you think everyone is out to get you they probably are. Everybody's out to get you. <laughs> right. And conversely, if you if you find out there's people trying to get you, it's probably because you're putting out that kind of energy that says that, hey, people are going to have to get me. You know, victim mentality is a great example of that. Um, mm -hmm. People, you know, see all these bad things happen to them. Oh, my car broke down on the way and I don't have money to fix it. And then I got sick and I had these medical, I had to go to see the doctor and had a really high medical bill. And then I lost my job and it just always happens one thing after another. And well, yeah, look at yourself is that you are probably bringing these things about because you are putting out these negative vibrations that I'm a victim, that everything happens bad to me, that, you know, woe is me. And those things just aren't fair. And so, yeah, all these things around you are going to, be negative happening because that's what you're putting out. That's what's coming back to you. Well, I think it's, it's really subtle because again, I was, I was actually just thinking about this last night because I, I was listening to a, a little portion of a talk that David R. Hawkins gave where he was talking about some of this stuff. And so it's interesting again, that even last night, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, well, I think I'm doing a pretty good job, but when I'm really honest with myself, I know that I'm still in some of those places that I mm -hmm. shouldn't be or don't want to be don't more be, time, yeah. more times of the day than I really would like to be. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, the, the, the easiest way or what I kind of been taught is, well, look at the world around you. And that's going to, mm -hmm. that's going to tell you what's going on inside. Yep. And so same thing, if, if like, if sad, negative people are just attracted to you and it's like, oh man, everybody I meet is sad and angry or whatever. It's like, okay, then yep. again, that's a time for us to pick up the mirror 
and be honest with ourselves because yep. I think sometimes that's hard. And like I said, I just had this again last night of, oh man, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. But it's like, pick up the mirror because you're probably doing something because those people get attracted to you like moth to a light because whatever light or energy that you're mm -hmm. giving off is something that those sad and negative people are attracted to. So you got to change what you're giving off if you want a different result. And it's the same way. I mean, I have yellow light bulbs on the outside of my house. Why? Because that light moths are not as attracted to as the white light. Right. So I've chosen to put out a different colored light on my outside lights so that I don't attract moths. Right. But I had to proactively think about that. And it's no different with our energy as well is we have to decide, do I want to put in a white, white bulb, a blue one, a yellow one, a red one, you know, whatever color you want to have beaming out there and realize that there's going to be impacts, you know, for all of those. Same thing too. Like, you know, if, if you, if you want to keep your eyes open and dilated so you can night sky you don't use blue or white light you use a red light mm -hmm. right to be able to see just enough to help illuminate yourself but not to shut you off you know from from being able to actually see the night sky mm -hmm. yeah well yeah it's, it's a good because you know people say like hey i think so you talk about i think i'm doing pretty well like i said my you know i, I think I'm, I'm on the i'm on the right right there i'm got i'm good with these things we've talked about you know you talked about uh loving and peace and all these other great things like you know high vibration stuff like i think i'm there like i i feel like i'm good um a great way to check is look at your world around you do you see if yourself surrounded by peace and love and all these other these other things or are is there negativity around you is there things are always going wrong? I'm, you know, uh, you talk about this people that are always sad and depressed are always hanging around me. Um, you know, that is a great, uh, a mirror to show exactly what's going on inside, you know, what's a as inside as outside, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so well, when I think it's, it's one of those, that's a little bit, it's sneaky and seductive in a way. So like if, if we take that, if, if you start to notice, let's say, that there's sad and, and angry people around you, what we have a tendency to say, what I find myself even saying is, oh, man, why are all these sad and angry people around me? Can't believe it. Why do I attract sad and angry people? The more I say that, <laughs> <laughs> the more I'm actually attracting it or I'm placing awareness or attention on it. Yeah, you're kind right. of reaffirming that. Actually. I'm reaffirming it just by saying it or thinking it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that was kind of one of the epiphanies I had last night was, well, instead of thinking like that, you know, instead, how can I turn that around to say something like, you know, um, loving and kind people are always attracted to me instead, yeah. right? Saying that or thinking about that, you know, uh, uh, you know, loving and kind people come into my life every day. Mm -hmm. Saying something like that, thinking something like that, and, and replacing that with kind of the negative that you had, because there's power in our words, whether those mm -hmm. words are spoken or whether those words are just thought. Yeah. It has the effect. And like I said, I think sometimes it's, we don't even realize we're doing it. It's like we're asking ourselves a question. Like, why do all these sad and angry people end up in my coming into my life all the time? Oh my gosh, I attracted another sad and angry person. But even asking those questions like that and placing our awareness there does something to our, our frequency. But also it's kind of reaffirming Yes, I would like more of that to happen, please. No, 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 I don't, right? Um, and so even starting to make those subtle shifts in how we're thinking or, or saying, mm -hmm. I think can make a big difference too. Right, yeah, and, and the trick with that is that 
again, some of this is this is subconscious level stuff because you know consciously you may be saying, oh yeah, I I'm positive, I'm happy going, you know, I, I'm in peace and love and all this kind of stuff, and you know I don't know why the, my world around me is different and the people that are attracted to me are not, you know that's kind of conscious, you know, you know, kind of thinking, you know, logical thinking, whatever like that, but. Um, you know, you've got the, the back subconscious. We talked, I don't know if we talked about this on past episodes or not, but 90% of the, of the thoughts, the decisions you have, you know, the way your, your life goes during the day is subconscious. You know, you only, you, you know, use your consciousness, a very, you know, small aspect of the day, the decisions you make and the thoughts you have, most of them are subconscious things. And so it's, I don't think it's just enough to say consciously, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in peace. I'm, you know, love and light and all these kind of things. I think you also have to try to flip the switch in your subconscious as well. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, for me, at least just saying, Oh, love and light and all this kind of stuff isn't enough. And this is something actually, I, this was on that webinar or whatever it was that I was here the other day too, is about, I don't want to say tricking your, your subconscious, but giving your subconscious something that it can agree with. Because if you say, Hey, I'm in love and light and I'm in always in a positive, great mood and I'm full of joy and all this stuff. And you're not, your subconscious is like, yeah, right. Like you say that, but like, we're not, we're, you're always moping around. You're always yelling at people. You're flipping people off in the, in the parking lot and you know, all this kind of stuff. You're, you're totally not that way. And so what was suggested is to figure out something that your subconscious can agree with. You know, um, so, you know, if you aren't acting that way and your, your mind knows that maybe instead you say something like, um, um, you know, positive people are continually to be attracted to me. Something like you kind of talked about there. Um, I'm surrounded by positivity, but I'm surrounded by love. I'm surrounded by, um, peace. Because then you can actually look and you can see love. You can see other people around you that are showing love. You can see people that are being loving towards you, you know, family members, um, your love towards your family members, you know, kids or spouse or like that. Um, and so you talked about how it's really important, the words that you say. Yeah. In this case, it's the words that you say that your subconscious can agree to and say, oh, yeah, you're right. There is a lot of love. Um, there is a lot. I think the example that they used was specifically about abundance and wealth, like you say, Oh, well, I, I'm, I don't have abundance or whatever like that. But if you still focus on look at all the abundance I do have, I have a computer, I've got a phone, whatever it is that you're listening to this podcast episode on, like that's something that many people don't have. You know, you have clothes, you know, uh, on your back, you have, you probably are um, not struggling to eat. You know, you have all these things that are really symbols and signs of abundance in your life. And so it's focusing on the abundance you do have and, and moving your subconscious, your awareness to those things that do align with what you're trying to say. Um, again, because well, sometimes you got a trick. Yeah, and that's why I think, too, you know, a, a gratitude practice or at least having awareness mm -hmm. for that kind of reinforces yep. this as well, right? And so, again, you know, if you're familiar with self-hypnosis or at least you know kind of calming your mind down because again when you when you move your brainwave activity down to lower alpha or theta phase then your subconscious is more subjective you end up going directly into your subconscious more often and so that's why some of these yeah. you know mantras and affirmations and other things like that you you're saying to yourself when you're in a more relaxed state because it's easier for the subconscious to get it. And you usually have to repeat it. I usually suggest to people at least 10 times. Why? Because the first time you say it, your subconscious knows you're lying. And it's going to say, bullshit, you don't mean it. Second time, ha ha ha. Third time, Same ha thing, ha yeah. ha. Four, oh, maybe he's serious about this because he keeps saying it to us. Yeah, right? why does he keep saying this? Yeah. Why does he keep saying this? And so it starts kind of listening and then, you know, I think, I mean, you can do a hundred times if you want to, but I think usually by 10 times, it's kind of like, oh, okay, we get the message, but we're going to be watching you to see if you're serious. Right. I got my eyes on you. I got but, my yeah. eyes on you. Right. And so I think that's why if you, again, if we just kind of keep using this, this same example, and again, 
this is all impromptu folks so for stumbling a little bit it's because sure we're just we, making it up we, as we go we're making it up as we go but if you say something you know like that of you know positive loving people you know come into my life every day positive loving people come into my life every day positive loving people come into my life every day right you say that then be aware because when somebody loving comes into your life right like last night uh went to the store uh a lot of times the experience is not necessarily that great but had to do a we've certain talked about that in episodes before yeah yeah we've talked about that <laughs> but but had to go and 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 send some money you know the, the to somebody overseas and and the machine here in Sedona was broken only one in Sedona because little town so we had to drive 30 minutes to to Cottonwood to go to Walmart to do it and every time we've done it here in Sedona, the people are are kind of surly a little bit, kind of like we're 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 uh, annoying them by doing this service that the store provides, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Not necessarily a good experience, but the machine was broken, and at first it's kind of like, oh man, right? But again, thank God for unanswered prayers. Because then we had to look and say, okay, well, what are we going to do? We go to Cottonwood, go to Walmart. Beautiful person that helped us. Great experience. Went like clockwork. Very easy. Never made us feel like we were bothering her. Good energy from the person, even though she was being distracted all the time, right? And so, you know, again, we leave there and it's like, oh, thank you. We're so grateful that we got her, right? Mm -hmm. Send her love, send her blessings, you know. And so when you encounter things that support the mantra or whatever you're trying to say, express gratitude for it because then again remember subconscious is looking at you like brad i don't know if i trust you jason i don't know if i trust you right mm -hmm. but it's like oh hold it he told me 10 times and now he's saying he's grateful for it too so maybe there's something to this right and maybe now i'm I actually see, like I'm not drawing his attention to that specific thing They're exactly like... yeah and so i think that in combination with showing the gratitude or being aware of and expressing the gratitude afterwards really kind of helps to seal it as you're trying to make those changes. Yeah, no, that makes makes a lot of sense. Um, like I said, I, you can use it on 3D stuff, level stuff. Um, you know, you can use it for just some of the mundane things like, you know, you want more abundance in your life, you know. You can use it to get more abundance in your life, you know, to focus on the, the things around you that you have. Or you can take it and you can use it like an example that you showed. Um, you know, show the the gratitude, the love for this person that's helped you. And, and I bet you'll find more people like that around you after you've done that. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know if you went any place after that, but I bet that the next place you went after that, you know, whether it's to eat or whatever, you probably, a person that was very loving and kind probably was there and kind of, you know, um, what was part of your experience there because that's well, what you're putting out. Yeah, because what was interesting is, um, so we had to take care of the thing at the customer service area, and then we were there, so we picked up a few things and then mm -hmm. check out. So we had a second person that was checking us out, and there was a young girl that was on the register before, but there was an older, you know, middle aged woman that that was there next to her. And what's interesting is is the younger woman checked out the person ahead of us, and then the older woman took over presumably the girl's going on a break whatever right shift or something yeah shift but uh different experience with the middle-aged woman than it would have been with the younger woman to to even some simple things like you know we bought some fresh chicken livers and so they were you know in one of those little plastic containers with the lid that wasn't quite on right and there's juice mm. and everything in there yeah, right yeah yeah i mean you know how that is right so so, you know, everything gets put in the bag, so take it out of the car, and it's like, oh, we better check and, and make sure there's nothing else in that bag with the livers because we don't want 
you know, liver juice and blood all over whatever else is in there. So I, I open up the bags. This woman had wrapped that in its own bag and put it in the bag. The younger girl probably would never would have done that. She wouldn't have even thought of it. She would have just thrown everything in. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, there's even evidence again that I hadn't recognized until you just said it. But yeah, the, the checkout experience after that, you know, half an hour, hour later, when we, when we got out of the store was totally different too. And again, mm -hmm. not the normal Walmart checkout. <laughs> So, you know, again, yeah, there's, you know, and so again, there I was, I, I wasn't even aware of it as much until you just said it now. So yeah. now I am sending, sending the woman some, some thanks and love yeah. and blessings um, for doing that. And, and yeah, the more we do it, the more our world around us will change. Yep. Yep. And like I said, the, the world around you reflects the world within you. Mm -hmm. and that's kind of the whole i mean you want to wrap this whole episode in a nutshell that's kind of it mm -hmm. you know but what you want to see in the world around you you gotta have inside um and what the world around outside you looks like is a reflection of what's going on inside so if you don't like what you see around you then that means you've got some work to do i'm on the inside yeah and i know sometimes it's it's a bittersweet pill but that's part of the journey, folks, right? If you're on this journey, that's part of the journey. So, yeah, um, yeah. real life in action during this episode as well, right? Jason learned something new uh, for doing this episode too. So thank you, Brad. You go. Thank you. Uh -huh. okay. All right. So with that, we're kind of out of time for this week. So. Yeah. We're going to wrap up, but I think, Brad, you said it well, you know, the world around you reflects the world within you and, um, you know, really something to think about because if it's not the way you want it to be, you know, maybe it's time to consider taking responsibility more mm -hmm. for yourself. Think about the fingers, right? Every time we want to point at somebody else, three are coming back at us. And it probably is, you know, when we change things about ourselves. Our relationships around us change. The world around us changes as well. And yes, mm -hmm. you know, this is not just about making money abundance like everybody's talking about, but it is a serious part of the spiritual path that we have to work on. So, yep. so with that, everybody have a great week and we will see you on our next episode. See you guys then. Yeah.